Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part two, probably the end of Abraham's bosom. Three days of Christ in hell. This should get to the resurrection unless I have to do a part three. I don't think I'll have to do a part three, but you never know. All right, let's... Uh, take a look at things uh let's go to acts chapter two. Oh boy today is november 6th the day after the election a lot of people have what i call trump derangement syndrome and that's not to say that i like the other choice, I don't. Actually, I think they're both two sides of the same coin. Heads they win, tails we lose. Uh, but I think he's a Judas and uh, says one thing but has planned the other thing. So sometimes I'd rather somebody tell us, oh, hey, I hate you people and plan to kill you. At least you know where they stand instead of somebody pretending they're on your side, you know. So, I don't know. But, hey, what can I tell you? All right. Um, all I know is, either way, we lose. In this world, anyways. Now, let me tell you something. In Acts chapter 2, it talks about tongues. It's not talking about slithering around on the floor, speaking, spouting gibberish, like you see in some of the so-called Pentecostal churches. That's not what it's talking about. It, it even tells you languages. You know, I've had people say, oh, well, Jesus is not really named Jesus because he was of Hebrew and he, that was his language. You really think that when Pilate was examining Christ, he was speaking to him in Hebrew? I don't think so. No, they were probably conversing either in Latin or in Greek. Greek was the common language of that entire area because of the conquest of Alexander the, Greek, uh, the Great, who was a Macedonian Greek. Conquer that area for hundreds of years until recently Rome had come along. I, I don't remember the exact time frames, but Greek was the common language of the entire area. So, and that's why during the when when uh, on the cross you had Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Now in official government businesses in the area yeah they probably they could have conducted it in latin which was the language of the latin uh, roman empire but greek was very commonly spoke spoken during this time period matter of fact the entire country that's called today turkey used to be called greece yeah, and if you ever heard of Constantinople, it was the capital of the eastern portion of the empire, the Roman Empire. And Greek was the language. So, it, you know, when, Gre when Jesus was speaking to Pilate, I'll guarantee you they were not talking in Hebrew. They were probably probably either Greek or Latin. So, you know, if you wanted to conduct business, you better know Greek. Just like English. English is a universal language in the world today. Do you know that there are uh, job opportunities for English as a second language? Teachers all over the world, especially in Asia. I mean, it's just, 
Germany, Denmark, Iceland, uh, they all, they all have to, you want to graduate from high school, you have to take English. But uh, Japan, and Thailand, and uh, a lot of those other countries, they, they hire English teachers. And they pay them half pretty decent money considering, you know, uh, as poor as some of those countries are. Well, not Japan, but, but I tell you what, uh, the uh, English is the top most popular second language in the world. Believe it or not, it is the top second language in the world. English. Because we are, we were the, the business, well, we were the business capital of the world. Who knows, maybe it's China now, but. All right, so let's take a look at Acts chapter two. We're going to read the whole thing. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. That word wind there is the same word. It's the word pneuma, where you get the word for pneumatic tools, air tools. Wind, it's also the same, translated same way as spirit, pneuma. You got the Holy Spirit. So sometimes pneuma is translated as spirit, other times as wind. But this is telling you it's a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. In Ephesians 4.14, Jesus, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Paul, we read that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, you know, a bad spirit, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Hmm. In John chapter 3, let's read what Jesus was saying to Nicodemus. John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. He didn't want to be recognized, but he wanted to talk to Jesus. So that's my guess. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We have to be born once of the flesh, and then we have to be born of the spirit. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And beware of people telling you, Oh, that being born of water, that's being baptized in a in a body of water what and they'll tell you that you got to be baptized in water to be saved there's actually people that teach this stuff have you ever heard of a woman getting ready to give birth and she says oh my water broke it's coming out i think that's what it's talking about your physical birth and then your spiritual birth. But that's my opinion. Verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. 
Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Listen carefully. Verse 8. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh. Can you uh, see the wind blowing? Can you see where it comes from? Can you see where it's going? No, but you can hear the sound. So the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goest. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. This is parallelism. It talks about the wind, and then it talks about the spirit. You don't, you can't see where the wind comes from. You can't see where the wind goes. The same with the spirit. You can't see it. And the word wind and spirit, pneuma in the Greek, same word. Jesus makes the parallel here. So let's go back to Acts chapter 2, verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Huh. You know, people tell you, oh yeah, you know, people uh, wrote the Bible to control the masses. Boy, I'll tell you what. Uh, Unless you're born a sheep, you're not going to hear the voice of the shepherd. So, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Why tongues? Well, we're going to find out why in a minute. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. What are these tongues? Well, we're going to find out in a minute. Verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. So here you have men of Judah from all over the, all over the world. Verse 6. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that they heard, uh, I'm sorry, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. So because that every man heard them speak in his own language, Language. That's what tongues is, not blah, 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 blah. No. And there are people that'll tell you that tongues is speaking gibberish. No. And I did a entire study on tongues. I think it was Kenneth Copeland watching him on whatever TBN or 700 Club or whatever it was. And I think it was Copeland and somebody else, and they're jibber-jabbering to each other, and people actually send these people money. Unbelievable. Hey, you want to send your money to them? Fine. I don't care, but, you know, I kind of wonder uh, if, <laughs> if they uh, are at the Great White Throne Judgment, which is the Lake of Fire afterwards uh i wonder what people are going to think when all their famous beloved tv preachers are going to the wrong place i don't know maybe they will maybe they won't so they were speaking in everybody's own language verse seven and they the multitude were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, one another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? 
Parthians and Medes. Uh, Parthia. Parthia was an empire that was a contemporary of Rome and about equal in strength from what I understand. Uh, Parthia and Medes was uh, basically today what is Persia or Iran. So Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia in Pontius and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in parts of Libya, about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying to one another, What meaneth this? You know, what's the meaning of this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Oh yeah, they're drunk. That's why they are speaking to you in your own language. And you got to realize, all these different languages? So if there was 11 apostles present, or 10 or 11... They're speaking different languages, all of them. Verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, so there's eleven of them, including, Peter is included in the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. So it's probably morning here. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So that means I'm going to be dreaming dreams, I guess. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. I wonder if, uh, Bob's note here, I wonder if that's going to be like a volcano. Do you know there's been a couple times in history where a volcano has gone off and ton uh, spewed probably millions of tons of ash and smoke into the air? There was actually a summer around the world where it snowed in the Northern Hemisphere on the 4th of July, snowed. People starved. There was no summer. All the crops froze and died. Think about it. Uh, look up Year Without a Summer on Google. Year Without a Summer. I think it was 18-something or other. Uh, let me look that up real quick. Uh, that was 1816 A.D. Known as the year without a summer because of a volcanic eruption in Indonesia. Can you imagine that? No summer. Unbelievable. Uh, the crops all died either by frost or the lack of sun. There was no sun. So, snowed in the winter. Uh, winter snow in summertime. Wow. So, yeah. What would you do if there was a year with no crops? Boy. Acts 2.19, and I will... Show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness. 
Yeah, that would work, wouldn't it? And the moon and the blood before that great notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I believe that name is Jesus, but if you want to use a word that's in Hebrew and Greek, Emmanuel, God with us. I don't I can't find Yeshua anywhere in my Bible, but I don't know. Use it at your own peril. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah, there's actually people that will tell you, oh, this is wrong. This is wrong. Oh, so my Bible for over 400 years has got it wrong, huh? And all of a sudden, you're going to correct everything and, and tell me uh, Yeshua. Uh, well, that's up to you, but I don't know. I don't think my Bible's been wrong for over 400 years, but that's just my opinion. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye, ye have taken and by wicked hands, have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up. What? Wait a minute. He was slain. He was killed. But in verse 40, 24, it says, whom God hath raised up. Resurrection. Hmm. Whom God hath raised up. Raised up from what? The dead. Having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, King David of Israel was speaking of him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. 27. Listen carefully. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Did you know King David went to hell? He went to Abraham's bosom like we did in this previous study yesterday. Abraham's bosom. Abraham was there. Adam was there. Eve was there. Samson. Isaac, Jacob, Israel, King David, they were all there waiting for the, 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 the Messiah, the Christ, to come. The sinless Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. John the Baptist was there. All the Old Testament saints were there. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer or allow thine Holy One to see corruption. Who's the Holy One? Christ. Christ. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. That's right. Christ is going to be the king on David's throne throne and he is now but he hasn't come back to earth to retrieve his kingdom yet verse 31 he seeing this before spake of the resurrection of christ the resurrection of christ see we are talking about resurrections in the bible 
This is absolutely, positively the most res uh, important resurrection in the entire Bible. You know, I, I cannot tell you, when I hear people tell me that the King James Bible is full of errors, then what do you believe? What do you believe? I mean, maybe Christ didn't get resurrected. Maybe he didn't do these miracles. Maybe he wasn't born of a virgin. Maybe he didn't even exist at all. What do you believe? You think God is unable to preserve his words in a Bible in English? With the King James, there was revivals in England, in the United States. You ever see a revival with the NIV or the NASB or the Catholic Bible? You ever see revivals with that? No, never. There will be revival, but it's going to be small. When persecution comes to the church and people start having to die or deny Jesus for their faith, either deny Jesus or die for Jesus for their faith, you will see revival, and you will see some miracles. It will happen. Persecution will bring revival, but it's not going to be large. It's going to be the remnant, small. But when I hear people say that my Bible is full of errors, I, I can't deal with it. Let me tell you something. When I first came to the Lord at the December of 1989, around 1990, somewhere, probably around March or April or May, somewhere around there, I was slowly dying from an incurable disease. And I asked the Lord, I, I said, if you cure me, I will serve you. Well, he did. And I hope that I am. But let me tell you something. I was listening to a pastor and Christian identity, seed line. And I asked the Lord, I says, Lord, if this is the truth, if this Bible's true and this doctrine is true, I want you to show me it is. Well, this pastor said, turn to this Bible verse, this, this book and this chapter and this verse. Now, I didn't know, the only two books in the Bible I knew where they were was Revelation and Genesis, the beginning and the end. Everything in between, I didn't know. So I flip open my Bible and guess what? I'm right there exactly where he said to be. I was like, okay. Well, he says, all right, he read through that and he says, okay, now I want you to go to this book and this chapter and verse. I flip it open. Guess what? I was there again. This went on about three, four, five, six, seven, eight times, maybe nine, 10, maybe a dozen times. I don't remember how many exactly, but I got to the point I says, okay, Lord, I... I, I, I believe you now. I believe it. This is the book you want me to read. And this is the doctrine you want me to believe. You don't have to prove it to me anymore. Well, after that, it quit happening. That's why I believe the King James. And when I hear people tell me, oh, it's wrong. So let's run over to Christ Eugenia and go get a... Uh, uh, William Fink's uh, version of the Bible because the King James is full of errors, tw over 20,000 of them. I know what they are. Either they're deceived or they're deceivers. Take your pick. I believe the Bible. I believe the King James is God's word for today. There's a reason why they hate it. Because guess what it tells you to do with Satanists and Sodomites? And it isn't to evangelize to them. 
No, it tells you what to do with them, but we don't have the stomach for that anymore. So. All right, let's go back to Acts chapter 2, verse 30. Therefore, being a prophet, Christ, and knowing that God had sworn, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, King David. Therefore, being a prophet, knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, Christ, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. Bible right here tells you that Christ was in hell. Shall I read this again? Okay, I will. He, David, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, wherefore, I'm sorry, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord saith unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly, that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? What do we need to do to be saved? 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Water baptism is the outward expression of washing the flesh, the sins of the flesh away. But we need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's far more important. That's what receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost is. Verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Save yourselves from this wicked group of people. Verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs, miracles, were done by the apostles, and all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and good, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And of course, your godly antichrist communists will tell you, oh yeah, this is communism. No, this is Christian love. There's nothing uh, Christian love about communism. That is the religion of the Antichrist. Verse 46. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, not in a building called a church that's actually a business incorporated by the state and the taxing authorities to be tax exempt. No, they went from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. There you go. And now you know why I'm so adamant about believing the King James Bible. So...
All right, let's go and read 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. And those that tell you that Paul is a false apostle will tell you that 2 Peter is a lie. Uh, personally, I think they're liars, but, you know, it's shame people fall for this garbage. Verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily, privately, shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Well, when their destruction comes, it's going to be swift. It may take a while, but it'll happen one day. Verse 2, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. What does pernicious mean? It means hidden. Hidden, people. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Uh, if you believe the Bible, haven't you ever heard people say, oh, well, you're intolerant. The way of truth is evil spoken of. And through covetousness. What is covetousness? Greed. And through covetousness they shall with feigned, faked, feigned words make merchandise of you. Yeah, they're going to want you to send them money. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Yeah, their damnation, it might be, it's not going to sleep. Verse 4, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. Now, I believe there's a different compartment of hell. Because they were, you know, they're in chains of darkness. But Abraham and the rich man and Lazarus, they were not in chains of darkness. They could see each other and talk. So I, they're in a different compartment, I think. Verse 5. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, did you know Sodom and Gomorrah were cities of the Canaanites? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were Canaanite cities. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Condemn them with an overthrow, making them an, an example unto those that after should live ungodly. You ever heard of, uh, I think it's Wern, Wernin, Werner Keller? Uh, there's a book called The Bible is History. It was written, I think, in the 50s. Really good book. I would get the original. I wouldn't get the updated one. Uh, they were digging in the area where they think Sodom and Gomorrah was, and they found sand that had been melted into glass. From what I understand, it takes well over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit to turn sand into glass. Did you know glass is made from sand? You cannot have an open-air fire that is hot enough to get that hot to turn glass, uh, sand into glass. And yet, in a, in a layer of a layer of uh, the ground, the sand had layers of glass. And I mean in a large area. You, you cannot build an open air fire and turn sand into glass. It's got to be concentrated in a an area and you got to feed extra oxygen or air into it and concentrate the heat to be able to turn sand into glass. That's how they do it in an industrial 
That's how they make glass bottles. But somehow this open air desert area had an area of glass and they can't figure out, hmm, oh, I know, uh, UFOs came down and set off nuclear weapons. Well, guess what? Supposedly, they found the same type of glass in the desert when they did the nuclear testing during World War II. And some people say, oh, well, nuclear weapons don't exist. I don't know about all that, but, you know, is everything I read a lie? I don't know. Now, that German author of The Bible as History, Keller, or Heller, Keller, I, I forget. Um, let me look it up real quick. Yeah, Werner Keller, K-E-L-L-E-R. Uh, he was a German archaeologist, and they found glass in the middle of the desert in the area that they thought was around Sodom and Gomorrah. Hmm. Oh, but that's just a coincidence, right? Yeah. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Condemn them with an overthrow, making them, them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Let me tell you something, people. I should have died at least three different times. I almost hung myself accidentally once when I was a little kid. I actually was rear-ended on a motorcycle accident by a car on the interstate doing probably about 60 miles an hour. Uh, how many people do you know that are rear-ended on a motorcycle on the interstate doing 60 miles an hour and live? Not many, right? I overdosed one time when I was in high school. Mother said I slept for about a day and a half. I almost died. She was afraid to take me to the hospital because uh, she didn't want me to get arrested for drug charges, but she kept an eye on me and checked me every 10 minutes or five, 10 minutes and I made sure I was breathing. What an idiot. Uh, that's the only three I can, well, I can think of some more things too, but, uh, yeah, the Lord was, the only reason I'm old is because the Lord was looking out after me when I was young and stupid. So I should have died a couple times, but I don't know why the Lord would have mercy on somebody like me. Psalms 86, 13. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. See, Christ went to hell, and he preached for three days and told all the Old Testament saints, I am the Christ, believe on me, and thou shalt be saved. And they did, I'm sure. And they're not in hell anymore. Proverbs 23, 14. Speaking of raising up a child. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from hell. I could have used some of that when I was a kid, but uh, yeah. Psalm 16, chapter 8. This is what Paul, Peter was talking about in Acts chapter 2. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, 
Neither wilt thou suffer or allow thine Holy One, Christ, to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life, eternal life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Wow. How about the book of Job, 1925? We read this before, but I'll read it again. Job writes, For I know that my Redeemer, redeeming us from sin and death in this fleshly, corrupted body, for I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Do you know that Christ is going to come back to the, I think it's the Mount of Olives. That's where he's going to come. And when he comes from heaven to land. Psalms chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. See, God has a begotten son, and his name is Emmanuel, God with us. Or in the Greek, Jesus. In Psalms 2.12, we are told, Kiss the sun. Not the S-O-N in the sky. Not the sun in the sky. The son of God. Kiss the sun lest he be angry and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Let's see. Did I? Yeah. Psalm 16, 1. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine Holy One to see corruption. I think we read that, but yeah. In Matthew 10, 28, Jesus said, And fear not them which kill the body. If we are called to die for our faith and to get our heads cut off, which is uh, the Noahide laws, N-O-A-H-I-D-E, and according to them, we are all, all Christians are idolaters, worthy of death, method of execution, beheading. Isn't that funny? I read that in the uh, book of Revelation. Hmm. Let's read that. Let's go to Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4 real quick. Uh... You know, the modern church world will say, oh, this will never happen to us. Oh, no, this doesn't belong to us. This is a different dispensation. They, don't even, they may as well not even believe this stuff. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them. And I think this is talking about the apostles. And judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, beheaded, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And that is just the introduction, people. Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew 23, 33, Jesus speaking to a certain group of people. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? 
Psalms 9.17, the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Where do you think Europe and the United States is in this uh, scenario? We have forgotten God. In the 1960s, early 1960s, I think around 1963, 64, we actually had prayer, Bible reading in Jesus' name, prayer in Jesus' name in public school, in elementary school. I remember. Then they took it out. We didn't have school shootings then. We didn't have teenage pregnancies exploding. We didn't have abortion. We didn't have integration and diversity. We didn't have any of that stuff. School shootings. What the heck was that? I never heard of such a thing. And what did the Christians do when they took it out? Nothing. You know, the Christians should have marched on the Supreme Court with ropes in their hands and hung all the justices, so-called, that voted for this. They should have hung them. But they didn't. Well, you can't fight City Hall. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Hmm. Revelation 118, Jesus speaking, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. He was alive in the flesh, was dead in the flesh, but he's alive in the soul and spirit forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. You see, hell was a prison. All those that died before Christ went to Abraham's bosom or they went to where the rich man was in the flames. But Jesus took the keys to the prison. In Psalms 142, verse 7, Bring my soul, not his body, his soul, Bring my soul out of prison. See, King David went to hell. Abraham's bosom. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about. The righteous, not the wicked. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. All right, let's read Isaiah chapter 61. Uh, you know what's funny is uh, Jesus read this very verse when he was in the synagogue. Let me see if I can find this. Well, let's read the uh, account of Jesus first. Luke chapter 4 and verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Verse 18. We're getting ready to read this in Isaiah. Jesus speaking. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. What captives? the captives that are in hell, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, 
this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So let's read Isaiah 61, where Christ read this from. Verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison, opening of the prison to them that are bound. Remember, how can he open the prison? He's got the keys of hell and death. Didn't Christ say he had the keys of hell and death? Yes, he does. Christ has the power to redeem these people from the prison of hell and death, which is what he did for three days when he went down to Abraham's bosom to hell and set the captives free. to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting, planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Trees of righteousness, planting of the Lord. Wow. Yeah. That'll preach, huh? All right. Let's go read Isaiah 24. Uh, let's see. Let's go to Isaiah 24, 19. Now, in the book of Peter, uh, the Bible talks about the uh, elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth will be dissolved. It'll burn with fire. I'm paraphrasing. But in Isaiah 24 here in verse 19, uh, this points to that future. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean, dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. Now, this hasn't happened yet. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and Jerusalem before his ancients gloriously. Uh, 2 Peter 3 and verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up, seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And I think that's what it was uh, referring to there. So, uh, let's see. All right, let's go to Isaiah 42. Uh, for those of you who don't know it, I did an entire playlist on Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel. But Isaiah is so sadly neglected. It really is. It's a wonderful book. Uh, 
I, yeah. All right, let's start in Isaiah 42, verse 6. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, or nations, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, hell, to them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth, ye that go down to the sea, and all that is therein, the isles, the isles, the islands, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. What isles? How about England? The United Kingdom? How about Greece? An island nation? And the inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. The villages that Kedar doth inhabit, let the inhabitants of the rock sing, the rock. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. What island printed the King James Bible? Uh, the United Kingdom, England, Britain, whatever you want to call it. Didn't they declare his praise? That's why I get angry when people tell me, oh, the King James Bible's wrong. It's wrong. But if you buy this new, brand new Bible, uh, it's, you know, it's the Word of God's been lost for almost 2,000 years, but now we've got the new and improved completely right. I don't know. I don't believe it. Revelation 118, Jesus said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Oh, yeah. In Revelation 10, 20, verse 20 and 14, eventually, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. There's two deaths. You got a physical death, and then you got a spiritual death. In Matthew 23, 15, Jesus said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, a follower, and when he is made, you make him twofold, twice, twofold more the child of hell, than yourselves. In Mark chapter 9, verse 45, Jesus said, And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. For it is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Do you know there's a worm that lives in the volcanic vents in the Pacific? And the water is about around boiling hot. Science cannot believe that this worm can live in almost boiling water. What's the name of that worm? They call them uh, tube worms. T-U-B-E. All right, so... Uh, let me see here. So to be cast into hell into the fire that shall never be quenched, where the worm dieth not, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye and having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Listen to this. 
Psalms 142, verse 7. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Ecclesiastes 4.14 For out of prison he cometh to reign. Uh, Christ! Didn't Christ go to the prison and he came out? He comes out to reign. For out of prison he cometh to reign, whereas also he that is born in his kingdom becometh poor. Revelation 20 and verse 7 And when the thousand years are expired... Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Uh, Satan is going to be bound for a thousand years. So, in Isaiah 53 and verse 8, he was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he, for he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. Isaiah 53, that is the suffering servant chapter. Maybe we should read that, huh? I'll tell you what, let's read Isaiah 53. And we'll close this out. I guess I'm going to have to do a part three for the resurrection. Verse one. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised. And rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he, Christ, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, Christ was our offering for sin. Christ was the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world. That is recorded in John chapter 1 and verse 29. The next day, John, John the Baptist, seeing, uh, seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. All right. Let's see where we where were we? Isaiah 53 verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. 
when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. He was numbered with the transgressor, tra transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Boy, will that preach. All right, well, I think we've already gone over an hour, and I think I'm going to have to do it part three. I hope you've enjoyed this. But uh, now you know why I, when I hear people tell me the King James Bible's wrong, and I have to run to some other person to get the words of God, and, and the words of God have been lost for almost 2,000 years. I don't listen to them. And they'll say, well, where was the Bible before the King James? It was in the hands of the Greeks. Oh, yeah. Probably the Septuagint for the Old Testament and the true Hebrews in the Hebrew. But uh, the Greeks have held the Greek translation. Well, the Greek, the original Greek of the New Testament, they've held it for 2,000 years. So... It didn't get lost before the King James came around. So, all I can tell you is, trust the Lord to keep his words pure. All right, this is the end of this study. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.